Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Oplau. I'm Kevin Campbell. And we have some big news coming out from the chaos that is Argentine football. Yeah. It's a complete soap opera. Messi retired. We've, <laughs> we've been talking about this for weeks. It seems as if Argentina has finally found their man. Kevin, let's hear a little bit about that. That man mm -hmm. is Edgardo Borsa. Yes. Edgardo Borsa, Andre, he, is, he wasn't the first choice for mm -hmm. most people. First choice was really Marcel Bielsa. Yes. So us fans. But the AFA went with Borsa. And on the foot in this investigation, I think they made a really inspired choice. Mm -hmm. Because Boza, this is a guy that he has won titles, mm -hmm. major international titles. And that's what Argentina wants to do. Yep. He won first divisions in Peru, Ecuador. And Andre, this guy won the Copa Libertadores with LDU Quito in 2008. And he also won the Copa Lib with San Lorenzo in 2014. So his trophy cabinet is tapped. Yep. I thought, listen, I, as you said, he was not the ideal choice yeah. for fans, but, you know, Bielsa, people, I knew they were never ever going to get Pochettino. I knew they were never going to get Simeone. They, these guys are young. Um, I really thought Bielsa was the guy that was going to go. I think uh, even uh, San Paoli, yeah. they were trying something where they were going to do, he was going to do the part time where he coaches Argentina and Sevilla. I actually think Sevilla was against, I think San Paoli was in for it. I think that if Martino, if he quit mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. and San Paoli didn't sign a contract with Sevilla, mm -hmm. San Paoli would have been the, the guy. Yeah, cause, but timing was off. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think he wants that job really bad. Yeah. Um, over the years, uh, a lot of South Amer Argentinian coaches have spread out of South America and done well everywhere. You've yeah. seen it with Colombia. I'm just going to say Pekamon, but there have been others. Actually, mm. five of the last eight coaches in the quarterfinals of the Copa America mm. were Argentines. Yeah. The Ecuadorian coach, mm -hmm. the Colombian coach, Argentina, yeah. and the Chile, all of them, they were Argentines, mm -hmm. and Peru. Yes. So we see how vital, how important Argentine coaches are in South America, how pivotal they are yeah. in Comebol. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go way back into history, they were actually the, the people, at the reference point for football in South America, which eventually spread and raise the quality with their coaches and technical ability. Yeah. This may be hard for people to believe, even Brazilian fans, but in the early stages, that was an Argentine influence yeah. that really raised their technical game, and then well, we saw what happened after that. Mm -hmm. But I, I digress. Yeah. I like the choice. I think it's brilliant. He reminds me a lot of Sabella. Uh, he's that type of coach where he is tactically flexible. Yeah. He does not have that one style, which I think is what Argentina needs. Mm -hmm. um, I think Sabella did that really well, because when Sabella took over Argentina, they were in chaos. Uh, this was after Maradona. They, I think Batista got a raw deal. I think he mm -hmm. took a team that was really in disarray and had to basically get results. But the team was wounded and he left. And it was a mess when Sabella took over. Yeah. And Sabella tried different tactics. He played players, which I think we'll get with this coach as well. He won't pick star players for the sake of picking star players. He's the kind of guy who will build a team. Yeah. He's the kind of guy who will pick players like the, the, the Branners and the you know, uh, the unknown players really, that in South America will be known. And I think he's the right guy for this transitional phase. Um, he was not my first choice, mm -hmm. but I'm happy with this choice. I think this is exactly what they need. Um, I think Bielsa, it's interesting, we'll see the reason why they didn't choose Bielsa, because I think Bielsa left that Lazio job. <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out, because now he's yeah. unemployed, did not get the Argentina job, and maybe, this is me just speculating, and drifting off all of it that he's probably going for that technical director role that was once held by Jose Peckerman. Yeah. So I will let's see how it goes. Yeah. Um El Loco Bielsa is mm. no, that's mm. not gonna be manager. Mm. But um El Patun, mm -hmm. Bigfoot, is now the manager yes. from Boza. And remember Boza, he's a really pragmatic coach. Mm -hmm. And what I liked is one of the first questions posed to him at a press conference was the messy situation. Yes. And about Messi, what he said is that he's going to talk to Messi mm -hmm. and just talk football with Messi. Mm -hmm. And he's going to bring it back to what's really important, which is on the pitch and football. Yeah. And leave the externalities out of the, the scene for now. Mm -hmm. um, but but Boza, he also was part of the Argentine squad that got made it to second place in the World Cup in 1990 mm -hmm. with Maradona. Yes. So he's a guy who's well respected all throughout the region. And going forward, you have the World Cup in two years' time. I think he's going to get to the World Cup and be the coach at the World Cup. And it's well-deserved because this guy, he took the chance 
he went to some smaller teams mm -hmm. in South America and he was really successful. He didn't just stay in Argentina. He expanded and that's how you really grew as a coach. So kudos to um, Edgar de Boza. Yep. Um, you know, on to other news, another international uh, update. Yeah. Belgium has appointed a new guy. None other than Martinez himself. I think it's interesting. Mm. I should be very specific about which Martinez. You know, it's Roberto Martinez. Yeah. Um, I remember when I saw the news, I was like, I had to look twice. I was like, is it really <laughs> that guy? Yeah. Is it him? What? Him? Um, <laughs> Kevon, what do you think about it? I did a double take as well. Yeah. Like, is it that same guy that coach Wigan and, and Swansea City. Yeah. How did they come up with that choice? You know? Yeah. Um, I have a bit of reason behind it, mm -hmm. but it's not enough for me to hire him. Mm -hmm. I think, get my mind into the Belgian FA, mm -hmm. I think they looked at his record with Swansea because Martins is a guy that always prided himself mm -hmm. on playing beautiful football, yeah. nice football. And he took a lot of players from Swansea who weren't that technically sound mm -hmm. and really improved their game. and. He's one of those nice guys. Yeah. He's not a disciplinarian. He's not he's not gonna He's a run type, yeah. 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 And this Belgian squad, they have so many, it's a lot of prima donnas, mm -hmm. a lot of really talented young players and really talented um, experienced players. Mm -hmm. You go from Witzel to Fellini to Hazard to Lukaku to Benteke to Roman Yu to um this guy Bashwai. Yeah. A lot of talented players and a back four for Tongan is good. But they lack that camaraderie mm. and Martinez is a guy that he would foster good team relationships and yeah. good team spirit so that's why I think they went for him he isn't the name he has only coached in England mm -hmm. and he coached um, Leicester teams his biggest challenge was Everton yeah and most Evertonians would say that he failed because he was sacked after I think two or three years mm -hmm. And Everton didn't push on from the Moyes era, they didn't do anything more, and they expected them to do that yeah. after um, having Lukaku mm -hmm. and signing John Stones and other influential players. So I think the Belgian association, I would have gone for different managers. Yeah. Um, we were talking off air, and Cesare Prandelli, he looks he needs a job, yeah. so why not him? But Martin has got it. Yeah. I, uh, this, I mean, we all speculate here. That's a good thing about football. Is, yeah. There's always opinions. We have different ways of interpreting a situation. Um, my thoughts are, and I could be totally wrong, this is just on my thoughts, is that maybe is it that he had a relationship with players like Lukaku before? Mm. At, uh, maybe it's like, okay, this is a guy who has worked with some of these guys before. Yeah. He has some sort of relationship. Maybe this is the guy who could communicate with these guys. Because what this says to me, is that maybe, of course I don't know, I have no proof, but basically what it says to me is that maybe they realized that uh, Wilmot, mm -hmm. you know, did not have the respect of the players. No. And it seems as if they, they, they went for a coach that has some sort of relationship with the existing players. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Kevin Morales, he oh. also plays for Everton. Yeah. He was coached by mm -hmm. Martinez and he's so, Belgian. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that's the thought process behind it because uh, after being around uh, teams, you know, at uh, certain clubs and so on, it is a big deal. You could have one of the best squads, but if they don't buy into what the coach does, you've seen it with Chelsea and Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho, love him or hate him, is one of the best coaches out there. He gets the results, his methods is up for the beat, but he gets results and it shows you no matter how powerful you are, if the players don't buy into your philosophy and your methodology, you, you are messed up. You, yeah. The results show Chelsea could not buy a victory. Yeah. And I think they are seeing that with Belgium and maybe, I would not have gone with Martinez, but I'm thinking maybe that is a factor that could be considered. I fully agree with you, Andre. Mm. If you look at Belgium over the last European Championships, mm. Wilmot, he was a bit inept. Mm -hmm. And he, the World Cup performance showed it as well. Yeah. In crucial games, that game against Wales, Andre, I was mm. so disappointed. Yeah. Because all he did, he changed like for like. Mm -hmm. Take one guy, let's replace him with this guy. There was no change, there was no manipulation in the, the structure or the way Belgium went forward. Yeah. And evidence of that was after the game, Thibaut Courtois came out against Mark Wilmot yeah. and he voiced his disapproval against Wilmot and the way he managed the squad. Yeah. So that's a clear sign. Your goalkeeper, yes, Kuta is young, but he's experienced. Mm -hmm. And for him to say something like that means something because Kuta, he has been under great coaches, yeah. Simeone and Jose Mourinho. So he's seen, he's seen the best. Yeah. So I think that 
going forward, Belgium, it was good to suck Vermont. Mm -hmm. Let's see how Martinez does. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. I don't know. We, as I said, off air, we were trying to come up with solutions. I actually could not really come up with much that could work. Um, we both came up with Prime Delhi. Yeah. But we'll see how it turns out. Uh, Belgium has that talented generation. Um, will they sustain that generation? It's something I don't think will happen right now. People <laughs> saying they will. Yeah. But um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So, you know, let's move on to our next topic. Bastian Schweinsteiger trains with the reserves for Manchester United. Yeah. We all know about Jose Mourinho coming across. <laughs> Jose Mourinho has recently came, come out and said that, hey, you know, listen, if you're not in my plans, mm -hmm. you know, hit the road, man. So, what do you think about that? Schweine may need a new club, Andre. Yes, Sebastian. Because Schweinsteiger, is it a sign of a lack of respect? Mm. Or is Mourinho trying to make a point? Mm. I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. Because Schweinsteiger, he literally limped his way through the Euros. Mm -hmm. And last season, he barely played under Van Hal. Yeah. And I think he's a signing with evidence of the previous regime. Because mm -hmm. he was Van Gaal's captain at Bayern mm -hmm. and Van Hal's go-to guy at Bayern. So when Van Hal came to United, um, he signed Schweinsteiger because this is the guy that he's familiar with Van Hal's um, methods. Yeah. But then Van Hal got the boot. Mm -hmm. Jose is in. Jose needs players fitness-wise, mm -hmm. top of the game. And Schweinsteiger is not at the top of his game fitness-wise. He hasn't aged well. He's only really 32. Yeah. And his body breaks down a lot. Yeah. And he is on a three-year contract, so I think it's um, Mourinho's. He, what he's trying to do, his gamesmanship. He's yeah. trying to send him to the reserves, so to let other teams know that he's not wanted. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, a lower-level team could come in and maybe put an offer in. Because let's face it, Schweinsteiger has a lot of experience, and teams would love to have him in their dressing rooms. So. Maybe Mourinho's want to get his wages off of that wage book mm. so he can bring in more players or just give Pogba more money. So that's what I think Mourinho's tactic is. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there's a couple factors that comes into play. Jose Mourinho throughout his entire, when I've been following him, mm -hmm. he has a tendency to do this. Uh, that's why you raised a good point. Is it a psychological game he's playing? Because, for example, when he left, uh, when he went to Chelsea the first time around, um, he gave Joe Cole a hard time. He's like, Joe Cole, you're gone. Yeah. And it turns out that he really liked Joe Cole all along. Yeah. And Joe Cole turned out to be a very pivotal player. And whenever Joe Cole was out of line, he would say, listen, I'll drop you really quick. Yeah. Um, I think he was, that was a very clever ploy to get the best out of Joe Cole. When he went to Inter Milan, the first guy, I remember he, before he even really did anything with the club, mm -hmm. he said Stankovic needs to go. And there was even a rumor that he was going to Ju Juventus. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what? Well, how could you sell Stankovic? He's, yeah. At the time, he was a very crucial player for Inter. Yeah. And it turns out that he really liked Stankovic and he was just doing that. He, I think it's something he does. Uh, he went to Real Madrid. Now, Real Madrid is a different kettle of fish altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, but he managed to orchestrate the exit of Raul. And I think it's his, his way of a certain dominance that I'm not afraid to drop or cut players. Mm -hmm. He even made, you know, he didn't say, he, he had positive comments on Rooney. But uh, we spoke about it on another show oh, yeah. where, you know, that's his way of doing things. So there's that. The wages, I definitely think they want to get him off the books. Mm -hmm. I think he's a player. Listen, football, we love the sport, we love the game, but it's also a business. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Schweinsteiger demands or has a huge salary yeah. to pull him across and buy and Van Gaal brought him across, across because he probably thought he'd bring leadership qualities. I don't know, it did not work out. Um, I think Jose Mourinho is trying to assess him in the preseason. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't perform, well then he's basically saying, you know, find another club. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things in play. My honest opinion is that he has been on a downhill slide a while now. Yeah. Um, I think Jose Mourinho thinks that as well. But you never know what's going on in the, in the special one's head. <laughs> yes. And Bayern, they don't get rid of good players. No. Who I think they know what they were doing. Yeah, they know yeah. what they were doing. So, you know, I think, uh, I think Schweinsteiger's time is, is, is at an end. Yeah. Uh, the worst thing that could happen to him is that he stays. Because a lot of players make this mistake. Mm -hmm. They stay and because they're going to fight for their spot. When they knew they should have left. And he would stay and stagnate on the bench. and just that, I think that would finish him off. That he needs like to go. Yeah. Picked, picked up others, but he did. Stayed on the bench and now oh, he's... Yeah, he's a perfect yeah. example. Yeah. Schweinsteiger... Uh, Valdez, um, Sergio Romero of Argentina, <laughs> um, uh, Van Gaal liked him at, um, at AZ Alkma. Mm -hmm. uh, he came across, he obviously trusts him, but he's doing nothing right now. Mm -hmm. So, and he's uh, the Argentine number one. <laughs> so, I mean, if you could keep him on it, okay, yes, there's the gear and so on. 
but you are a German player who has injury problems. You're not really that old, but you're not really performing. Yeah. I think Schweinsteiger is on his way out. Uh, if he knows what's good for him, he should try to orchestrate to maybe a smaller mid-table team. Yeah. But even back in Germany or something, but mm-hmm. um, he, he needs to figure out what he's doing with himself right now. Oh, come over to MLS. Mm. Always mm. welcome there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Central FC. Oh, yeah. Ba- Bastian. Oh, Derby Connection. Ba- Bastian, you know. Join Kenwin Jones. Let's see, do something. Yeah. Big players come in the turn out. Yeah. Up next. Yeah. Speaking of transfers. Yeah, let's switch focus. Mm-hmm. We go from Manchester to London. Yes. Chelsea. Lukaku. Rumors have it that the Belgian wants to leave Everton mm-hmm. because Everton kind of provide Champions League football, mm-hmm. they kind of provide European football, and Everton has no real um, aim of winning the Premiership. Yep. But Chelsea does. So, Chelsea, rumor has it that they will want Lukaku mm-hmm. um, to replace or add pressure to Diego Costa, yeah. who may leave. So, Andre, Lukaku, former Chelsea player, do you think it would make sense? Um, yes, only because Jose Mourinho is gone now. <laughs> um, I don't know if he's an Antonio Conte type player, yeah. but Antonio Conte is the type of guy who would make it work. Mm-hmm. But I, I just don't see him. I think it's good for him to go to a club like that. Mm-hmm. But I can't help but feel this is a in your face to his former coach, Jose yeah. Mourinho. He had very choice words for Jose Mourinho. Mm-hmm. Jose Mourinho had choice words for him. Uh, Jose Mourinho won the league, so he was a bit arrogant when he came back the second yeah. time. But then we saw what happened with Jose. And I think the exit of Jose Mourinho is paving the way for him to come back. He's like, I'm going to come to Chelsea and I'm going to prove that I could play because you said I couldn't. And I think that's exactly what it is. Of course, we can never verify this. We don't know what's going on in Lukaku's head. Yeah. What's going on in Lukaku's head? Um, Mino Raiola, yeah. he is actually Lukaku's agent. Yeah, is that name again? <laughs> that guy. Oh, he's everywhere. Yeah. So, interesting point, the agents. So, it's a lot of things. It's, it's the... the the saga with him and Jose Mourinho mm-hmm. having an agent who is apparently negotiating all the biggest transfers ever. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great move for him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a great move for Chelsea though, because he's going to get what he wants, which is yeah. top football, mm-hmm. um, game in for the Premiership title. But um, I just don't see him being an Antonio Conte type player. But um, you know, that agent gets things done, man. So yeah. we'll see. Um, with Chelsea, remember their strikers, they have Diego Costa and um, Bashwai. Mm-hmm. But Conte likes to play two up front. Mm-hmm. So rotation could come and could, could be a factor. Yep. So Lukaku could play. Um, yes, he, remember Chelsea plays on the counter mm-hmm. traditionally. Mm-hmm. And that's why Lukaku is actually good. Yeah. His first touch is not good at all. No. Um, but he's powerful, he's quick, he's a good shot on him. And um, he could do well. Um, I was going to say. If Conte could get the best out of Gresham and Appella mm-hmm. and get Italy to the quarterfinals, then Lukaku he can probably mold into something. And he's pretty young. For, yeah. He's experienced, but he's young. He's 23, 24. And that's um, for the games he has played, the clubs and the, the environments he has been in, that's mm-hmm. really good for that age. So maybe he can still be molded and changed a bit. Mm-hmm. But Conte has to have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I think uh, he's very much in the mold of... Uh, he's not the same player, so before people kill me online. Yeah. But it's similar to Morata when he came to Juventus. Oh, yeah. He's not quite there at the world-class level in my yeah. eyes. Yeah. He's just a little bit under. I don't think he's world-class, mm-hmm. you know, just banging goals in the net all the time. I think he needs a lot of things to work. Yeah, yeah. And if there's one guy who could milk that talent out of him, is Antonio Conte, as yeah. you said, for the same point Kevin just made. Mm-hmm. So um, it's an interesting move. I think it actually might happen, or it is going to happen. So let's see how that turns out. Um, we usually answer a lot of questions mm-hmm. from our camera person. So let's hear a couple. So guys, apparently, the World Players Union, FIFPRO, has said that Jose Mourinho should be sent to prison for Jose his Mourinho treatment <laughs> of Mr. Schweinsteiger. Oh, wow. I think he should be, being all pro-union and everything. What do you all think? Uh, uh, Jose, he wouldn't care. Yeah, Jose doesn't give a crap. Yeah. Jose will just be like, eh, yeah. <laughs> I want to get rid of him, I don't care. Jose will literally do his trademark line, nah, shut up. Yeah. Uh, I think people <laughs> just love to hate Jose Mourinho. He's a winner and he's not afraid to let people know he's a winner. Yeah. So naturally you're going to get enemies, even if you're a modest winner. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always going to, that he's the kind of guy who will always cause that divisive sort of opinion. So from what I've seen with Jose Mourinho, Jose Mourinho, Jose Mourinho doesn't care. But from my opinion, yeah. I think uh, his treatment of Schweinsteiger is what any good coach would do. Yeah. 
uh, coaches have to make these hard decisions. He has, he's at a high pressure club. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if it was up to me, I would have sold him a long time ago. If I was Manchester, <laughs> I hate me Manchester. If I was managing, I don't know, I just made up my own word there. Maybe that's the vote for any management. Yeah, um, so we have now dubbed the new term for my managing Manchester, Manchester. Manchester. Find it on the back page of the Oxford Dictionary. You know those blank pages that they leave? Yeah. Um, Written in Braille. Dictionary. Yeah. Yes. And the dictionary that's not approved by anyone. It'll be in Webster's, but yes. I'm not Oxford yet. Hmm. Webster allows like, um <laughs> Back to the football. Yeah, oh yes, back to the real things. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Jose Mourinho doesn't care. And I um, I think he's just doing If I was managing FIFA, in my career mode, trying to be the first guy I would sell. Because it's just a smart thing to do. I mean, people yeah. keep forgetting this is a business. You need to get results. Those same fans yeah. will criticize Jose Mourinho if he plays at Old Bastion and twenty seconds. He doesn't perform and he scores a own goal or something. Yeah, I want to correlate this mm -hmm. to Casillas Ooh. because we since, since Mourinho dropped Casillas, mm -hmm. we saw how mm -hmm. he played at Porto mm -hmm. atrocious. Yes, dropped from the Spanish team and his performances have really gone down. Mm -hmm. So maybe he saw something in Casillas that signified that he needed to go. Mm -hmm. So same with Bastion. And this is where people need to trust. This is why they, this guy has won. Yeah. This is why you need to trust your coach. This is where people, fans have the luxury of making such criticisms. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a coach. He should have played this guy. He should have played that guy. Yeah. Um, I was one of the few defenders of Jose Mourinho. I always had doubts. I liked him at Porto when he won, when he knocked out Lazio, a very good Lazio. Mm -hmm. Simeone. I actually thought they were going to win that year, way back in 2004 or yeah. 3. Um, then he went to Chelsea. And then when he went to Inter Milan, is when I really saw Jose Mourinho really, really, really knows his stuff. I was mm -hmm. always a fan. And then when he made his move to drop Casillas, I told people, listen, Jose Mourinho knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Real Madrid fans, and he was like, no, Casillas is a legend. Yeah. But that's, what, that's, what, that's why you hire Jose Mourinho. Jose yeah. Mourinho is that guy who will make that hard decision and say, listen, you're not pulling your weight, you need to go. Yeah. Ferguson used to do it, and he praised him for it. Yeah. Some, well, most he people. Big time Fergie used to do that. Yeah, so I think he should have been the first guy to go to Manchester United instead of David Moyes. In terms of to answer the original question, I think he's just doing what a coach does. Yeah. So fans get over it. Yeah. Alright, no problem. Um <laughs> so apparently Andre Icardi mm. has tweeted that he has no intentions of moving from Inter Milan. Scoff. Hmm. Uh, Icardi. Uh, Kevon, you know, well, I'm an Inter Milan fan, everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh, really? It, yeah. We weren't yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just get free Inter Milan jerseys. I just like uh, the sponsors, actually. Yeah. Um, Icardi is a guy, we spoke about Jose Mourinho being divisive. He's another guy. If you're an Argentinian and more so an Inter Milan fan, he's not loved by the Argentine public because of the situation with him and Wanda, the soap opera. Yeah. Well, for those of you who don't know, I can't believe we've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, Maxi Lopez, yeah. ex-wife, is now with Icardi. Yeah. So you can see there's a little bit of friction and they used to all hang together in the same club. Yeah, we used to come home and have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, we used to invite Icardi home for mm -hmm. dinner and then... French the and their toys, why yeah. not? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. More like stab in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's play the stab in the back game. Yeah. And it was definitely the players of Argentina, at least. Yeah. Um, even the coaches. He was not picked because, you know, they made us. Martino never picked him. Mm -hmm. We all know he will never see it in the press. But those who follow Mundo, uh, by Celeste and so on, with si Sivan John and those guys, that's, that's a known fact that he does not like players like that yeah. because of what they represent. And it shows that you all feel antic. Young players take note, yeah. you know. Conduct yourself in a certain mm -hmm. manner because it's hurting Icardi's chances with the national team. Yeah. And then for Inter Milan, he would be taking pictures with his wife on Instagram and doing stuff. And then uh, him and Maxi Lopez, I was going to say Rodriguez, <laughs> Maxi Lopez, yeah. they would have goals at each other on the field. And no shaking of hands. Yeah. And, and then he, it. yeah, and then he showed his desire that he wasn't overly committed to Inter. And his yeah. wife, once again, she comes up, Wanda, yeah. um, is apparently the one doing negotiating for him. So, Inter Milan fans don't trust him right now. I don't trust him. I think he's a very good player. Mm -hmm. I think he's a top player. I think he's a very top number nine striker. Yeah. But his personality is, I think, to be an Inter Milan captain, um, I think he has big shoes to fill with Zanetti and guys before him. Yeah. So, Bergami. Yeah. So, he needs to get it together or else. I think, I think Mancini needs to either cash in on him and sell him. Mm -hmm. Because I think his, his goal scoring attributes are great. Yeah. But I think he hurts the team. His conversion ratio is phenomenal. Really. Yes. Um, when Icardi is one of the keeper, he usually scores. Mm -hmm. um, possible options he can go to? 
usually, well, we thought it would be Napoli for a mm-hmm. while, mm-hmm. but Napoli splashed some cash. Mm-hmm. So he Higuain money yeah. and bought Arcadia's Milik from Ajax for 35 million. Yeah. So he is not going to go to Naples. So yeah. the options are limited. Arsenal, they need a striker, but Andre is also going to spend money for a striker. Yeah, so the, the, the thing about Icardi is, which is the original question, is you know what we think about him not leaving. Yeah. I think he's the kind of guy, I don't believe that. I think if the right offer comes, mm-hmm. I think he also knows that Inter, he may not get a treatment somewhere else yeah. that he gets at Inter right now. So I think Ikari is playing that game, he's playing a dangerous game. I personally don't like it. Mm-hmm. I think it's he's not going to go anywhere, but I think uh, the Inter president has jacked up his price to I think 60 million euros, I'm not too sure. Yeah. I think if somebody comes to that price, oh wow, yeah, oh. I, th- I know it was going up really high. Yeah. Um, if that price comes, they will sell him. I'm yeah. sure about it. Will in terms of the replacements, I don't know, but I think they would. They would if they get the right price. So Kashi, you know, not a troublemaker like Ikari. Maybe yeah. go buy a young South American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's my opinion. <laughs> I'm moving on to some Barcelona news. Apparently, there are rumors going around that Man City is eyeing some of Barcelona's goalkeepers. Mm. Um, the coach has said that. They really have no problem with that happening at all. Mm. Do you think that will hurt Barcelona if any of their goalkeepers actually do move to another team, Man City or otherwise? I love Barcelona, Andre. Mm. Last for the last two seasons, actually, they've been rotating um, Ter Stegen and Claudio Bravo. Mm-hmm. So they're a club that normally you have won your first choice goalkeeper, mm-hmm. and he's much better than a second choice. Yeah. But they have two really good keepers at the interchange. Mm-hmm. It's really unique. I, I like it because mm-hmm. usually Ter Stegen plays all the cup games, mm-hmm. all the Copa del Rey and the Champions League games, and Bravo plays the league games. But it's a position that Ter Stegen, I think Ter Stegen is much younger than Claudio Bravo. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't want to be on the bench for league games. So they can probably nick Ter Stegen because mm-hmm. he has aspirations of replacing Neuer mm-hmm. as Germany's number one. And uh, what Man City though, they have a certain Joe Hart, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they also have a very talented Argentine, uh, Wilfredo Caballero. Yeah. Um, I think he's a top player. I think Pellegrini trusted him when he went across. Just like Romero, I think it was a bad move. I think yeah. he should have stayed at Malaga. But I think the money and the prestige. Um, I think it's no big surprise that all of a sudden Pep is at Manchester City, oh, yeah. Pep Guardiola. So obviously that connection is going to be built. Um, the thing I like about Man- Barcelona is when Pep came in, they always, as it said, the goalkeeper for years was a problem for Barcelona. Mm-hmm. They had guys like Rostu Rekba and Bonanno and those guys, good keepers. Yeah. It just was not working. And, you know, Valdez is unlike the guy who came all the worked his way up. Was mm-hmm. never the best keeper in the world. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. But they stuck with him and they started the rotation thing with uh, Valdez would play the majority of the games and the Copa del Rey was Pinto. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing that uh, Luis Enrique is doing the same thing with Bravo. And uh, why is his T- name? T- yes, T- yes. I always pronounce his name wrong. I probably have some block, block with that name. Um, I think it shows how much Barcelona has grown in terms of their development. Mm-hmm. The fact that they have two keepers. Yeah. And I'm sure I think there's a third keeper in the reserves. I can't remember his name right now that he's on loan somewhere. But um, I think they understand. They have an understanding. Um, I think it will work. I don't think Barcelona will be really too scared. In fact, you know, they have to shake up this court a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, I don't think they have a problem. I think it's good business. They have a good relationship with Pep. Pep knows what they have. Yeah. So, I think they can come to an understanding that will benefit both clubs mutually. And also, City, they have um, Chiki Bergestein, mm-hmm. the former uh, Barcelona managing director. So, yeah. there are links there between mm-hmm. two clubs. I was going to say that, but he pronounces it better. So. <laughs> yeah, but that's a very good point. Um, yeah. That's the kind of guy you want to develop your teams. Man City, when they started to get their money, mm-hmm. they brought him in. And I have no doubt that Pep, with also his presence, mm-hmm. is definitely they're gonna form a strong relationship. Project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's my opinion. Yeah. That's all the time we have for questions. Yeah. So this is Andre Soklal. You can find me. I'm gonna switch things up normally. <laughs> Kevin asked me where to find me. I'm gonna tell you where to find me. You could find me at Andre Soklal on Twitter and Instagram. And you can subscribe to my channel at Andres Imar. Kevon, where can we find you? You can find me at Kev868 on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. And fans, make sure to like our videos, mm-hmm. comment, and subscribe. Yes, you're not going to find us on that stupid Pokemon app. Mm-hmm. That's where you find us. So, yeah. this is Andres Oklal. I'm Kevon Campbell. And you're looking at Extra Time TV. Yeah. I like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs>